So um, I'm Meredith Warren. I'm also from the uh, Sheffield Institute for Interdisciplinary Biblical Studies. And I'm going to take you back in time a little bit, um, back to the first century. And I'm going to tell you a little story first that's not actually in the Bible, but it's in an early Jewish text. And it's called the Testament of Abraham. It's a really good story if you have time to look it up and read the rest of it. It's a riot. So basically, the archangel Michael has a problem. He has a big problem. God has asked him to go down to earth and tell Abraham that it is time for Abraham to die. Abraham needs to sort out his things and come back to heaven with the Archangel Michael. Abraham is not super keen on this. He decides to give the Archangel Michael a bit of a runaround and distract him by creating a huge meal with a whole bunch of delicious things for them both to eat. Michael freaks out. He can't eat any of that food. Okay? And he says, he zips back up to God and says, God, what am I going to do? I can't eat any of this food. All the heavenly spirits are incorporeal. They neither drink nor eat. And he's set a table with an abundance of good things that are earthly and corruptible. So this mortal food, this earthly food is mortal and corruptible, just like Abraham is mortal and corruptible. And Michael is a divine being of some sort. He's an angel. He can't eat that food. So there's a problem. Angels eat one kind of food, and human beings eat another kind of food, and eating the other type of food is going to cross a boundary that is unbreachable. So God understands this problem, and he says to Michael, don't worry, I'm going to send you back down there, and I'm going to give you a little spirit of eating, and that little spirit of eating is going to sit inside your mouth, and it's going to eat all the things that you put in your mouth, and it's just going to look like you're eating with Abraham, and you won't offend him, it's going to be fine, but you won't actually be eating any of that corruptible mortal food. So the point of this is that if, you're, if you belong to the heavenly realm, you don't eat food from the earthly realm. If you belong to the earthly realm, you don't eat food from the heavenly realm. But sometimes it happens. And so the question is what happens and why does it happen? So the eating of heavenly food by human beings seems to happen quite a lot in texts of antiquity. And it's a literary trope that we actually still make use of today. And we'll talk about a couple of examples. But the issue is that um, so far, most scholars haven't connected the dots between these different examples in antiquity. And so we're, we've been looking at these texts as individual texts rather than as part of a cultural understanding of how food transforms. So one of the most perplexing scenes is actually from the New Testament, from the book of Revelation. Has anyone read the book of Revelation? It's a weird one, OK? Um, but one of these scenes has um, John of Patmos, who is receiving all of these visions. Most of them are sort of doom and gloom. Most of them are kind of violent. Um, but this one has John receiving a scroll from heaven. And instead of reading it, he eats it. So. Another mighty angel, you can see him there, um, comes down and he presents uh, John with this scroll. And a voice from heaven tells John to take the scroll and then warns that even though it will taste sweet, it will be bitter in his stomach. And you can see that John first eats the scroll and then realizes that he's made a horrible mistake and he has a bad tummy ache. Okay. So after he's eaten this scroll, John receives a commission to prophesy again. So this is, this is a very peculiar scene. And people don't usually eat scrolls. And we don't have any known rituals of people actually eating books in a ritual setting. So this doesn't really happen. So it's, it's only something that happens in stories. But if we look at other examples, we can see that there's a pattern. And that'll help us understand why John eats this scroll and why the scroll does what it does once he eats it. So this is the pattern that I've uncovered. So a heavenly being offers something heavenly for a mortal being to eat, which brings about one of three things, or three of three things, or two of three things. The transportation of the human being to another realm, the physical transformation of the human, and or the transmission of divine knowledge to the human being. So those are the three options that you get with, with this thing. And I'm calling it hierophagy. It's a made up um, pseudo Greek word that means the eating of holy things, basically. So a really good way of getting our heads around what hierophagy is, is with our old familiar example from Alice in Wonderland. And I'm assuming most people are familiar 
with Alice and her visits to Wonderland. So Alice goes down to Wonderland, she falls down the rabbit hole, but she can't access Wonderland yet, right? She gets into this huge room, and at the end of the room, there's a tiny, tiny door, right? And she's far too big to get into the door. And the doorknob, who's rather rude, to be honest, um, prevents her from getting in there and says, you've got all these other options. What happens is a glass table appears, and on the table, there's a little bottle that's marked, drink me. So she drinks, and she shrinks, which is fine. She's the right size to get in the door now, but it's locked. She realizes that there's a nice little box of cakes sitting right beside her. She eats one of the cakes. She can get back up to get the key that's on the top of the table. Unfortunately, she's now far too large to get through the door and begins to cry giant tears that fill the room up with water. Is everyone remembering this scene? It's very fresh in my memory. Along floats the little bottle with one little drop left in it. She drinks it. She shrinks again, and she's finally able to transform enough to get into Wonderland. So the food that Alice has eaten is not divine, but it's from another land. It's from Wonderland. And it's a realm that Alice can't access unless she eats the Eat Me cake and drinks the Drink Me bottle. She knows that Wonderland exists. She can see it through the keyhole, but she can't get to it without eating. And when she does, she's transformed. So this isn't identical to the pattern that we find in antiquity, but it's close enough that it can help shed light on what's going on in these ancient texts. So in my larger project, which is a, a long book about all of these different texts, um, I look at a whole bunch of other texts, but um, my main conclusions are that texts across religious um, groups, pagan, Jewish, and Christian from antiquity, all use this kind of trope. They all use hierophagy as a way that characters can cross boundaries from one realm to another. So usually it's from the earthly realm to the heavenly realm. So let's take a look again at Revelation. If this is our pattern. If we've got the transformation in abilities or appearances, location, and the transmission of knowledge, Revelation shows us two examples of that, right? By ingesting the scroll, John has new abilities. He's able to prophesy. He's also got divine knowledge, which is the contents of that prophecy, right? So when he's eating this food, like Alice, from another world to which he doesn't really belong, there are changes that happen to him. He is changed by the eating of this food. He's able to communicate the word of God to those around him, and he's the sole person who has access to that knowledge. So the question is, why do stories keep using food in this way? And one of the clues is in the taste, right? Dusty old scrolls don't usually taste sweet, but that's how John's scroll is described. It's going to taste sweet as honey in your mouth, and once it gets into your stomach, it will be bitter. If we look in antiquity, we notice that divine food often tastes sweet. So, for instance, Greek gods eat ambrosia and nectar, and those are both sweet. So if we look at Homer's Odyssey, for example, we read that Calypso and Odysseus eat different foods, he eats human being foods, all the nice things that Calypso can find, and Calypso has herself served nectar and ambrosia. So there's this division between what gods eat and what humans eat, and God's food is sweet. And this is also something that we find in the Bible. We find in the Psalms and in the Proverbs and also in an apocryphal text called the Wisdom of Solomon that God's words taste sweet. So divine food tastes sweet, and when people receive divine food in visions, they know it's from God because of the sweet taste that it leaves in their mouth. So there's still the question of why food works this way, okay? If we look at another biblical text, 1 Corinthians, Paul, St. Paul says that if people eat food sacrificed to idols, they're actually becoming partners with demons. So there's an association that happens when you eat food, even across divine boundaries. So that's one of the reasons why this bond works, right? Is because you're sharing food and that creates an intimate bond. So I'll conclude by sharing what we found, okay? So we've got hierophagy, binds the eater to the place of origin of the food. This isn't super obvious with Revelation, but it is obvious in other texts such as the Persephone myth, if any of you are uh, familiar with the pomegranate. It also transforms the eater, new abilities to prophesy, sometimes physical transformation, and also the transmission of divine knowledge. 
John eats the scroll in Revelation in order to know what God wants him to prophesy. So hierophagy, now we get to the, the current stuff, has a long life from thousands of years ago to as recently as the previous decade, and it occurs across multiple communities and cultures, from Celtic folklore to the Matrix. Um, and despite its prevalence, it hasn't really been studied at all. And so it's my hope that the exploration of hierophagy here helps us understand uh, this trope across a range of disciplines, from literature to anthropology to film studies to folklore studies, and understand better what happens when people eat food from other realms. Thanks.